Southwest Manitoba, productive Stillwater Trout Lakes. Two terms that may seem foreign, but let me assure you this region is home to some huge trout, browns, rainbows, tigers, brook trout. I'm Phil Rowley, and welcome to the new Fly Fisher. New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the Russell Inn, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Umpqua Feather Merchants, Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy. Today the new fly fisher is based out of the Russell Inn located in the parklands region of southwest Manitoba amongst arguably some of the finest public stillwater trout fisheries in North America. The shallow productive lakes nestled within this region have specifically been selected and groomed for their potential to grow healthy trophy trout. The Russell Inn is the stillwater hub of the parklands region, rich with amenities for the fly fisher including great food, accommodation, Wi-Fi, convenience store and gas station. Everything you need is at your feet enabling you to focus on the fantastic still water fly fishing this region has to offer. Strike indicator presentations have evolved into an important still water presentation technique, particularly in shallow water 15 feet deep or less. Indicators allow you to control two critical presentation elements depth and retrieve speed. Depth is governed by the distance set between the strike indicator and flies so they suspend just above the bottom. Typically one to two feet depending on the bottom contour and makeup. How little or often you retrieve the line dictates the retrieve speed. On today's show I'm going to show you some of the strike indicator tricks, techniques and patterns I like to use when fly fishing lakes. Fish on. <laughs> Like a brown trout. Hard to tell yet. It's fighting like a brown. But it's. Uh, make sure I distribute that line evenly on the reel. And it's a brown trout. Nice plump brown trout. Look at the shoulders on that thing. Look at the sides on that thing. Look at the shoulders and the belly. I bet you it's been eating a lot, a lot of minnows. Wow. Love the parklands. Make sure it's good and healthy. She's pretty plump. Off she goes. Wow. <laughs> Repeat as necessary. I'm often asked about indicator size when it comes to fly fishing lakes. And unfortunately, there's no silver bullet. You need a variety on hand, particularly when you're fishing balanced flies. Balanced flies weigh more than traditional beadhead flies, so larger indicators are needed or else smaller indicators are just gonna simply get pulled under. So again, you need that variety on hand. And since any surface chop on the water, the bigger the wave, the bigger the indicator you're gonna need. One of the primary reasons we use strike indicators in fly fishing lakes is it helps you control your depth, one of the key presentation elements when it comes to fly fishing lakes. You can use a weight to help surgically set your depth so you know to the foot 
or almost to the inch how deep your flies are going. And to do that, we're going to attach a weight to our fly. And the weight can be a pair of hemostats, or in this case, these are little ice fishing weights ice fishermen use to set their depth when ice fishing during the hard water season. We're simply going to clip the weight onto the fly, lower it over the side of the boat gently. You don't want to let this plunge into the muck. We're just going to allow that to pull the fly, the leader and tip it and the fly line. It's going to go right down to the bottom. And I'm going to look at my indicator on the water and I'm going to pull up on the leader. In this case, I want to start with about two feet off the bottom. I'm going to set my indicator. I'm going to lower down again and gauge the distance between the indicator and the water surface. That will tell me when I take the weight off, of course the indicator is going to come up and suspend on the surface. That distance between the surface and the indicator will tell me how much my fly is hanging off the bottom. So you can use this method to surgically set depth wherever you're fishing, shallow water, deep water, and really at times if you don't have a sounder, it's a way to know the depth of water you're going to be fishing in or what you're set in so you can effectively fish lakes. It's a great technique and I recommend you give it a try. In order to ensure your flies sink straight down beneath the indicator, it is important to have level, thin diameter leader and tippet between your indicator and flies. Flies won't sink straight down if you use a standard tapered leader due to their long, thick butt sections resulting in differing leader and tippet diameter along its length. In order to accomplish this, it is important to use dedicated nymphing leaders featuring short butt sections or level leaders constructed entirely out of tippet. Small barrel swivels, size 12, 14, and 16, may not be considered a common component to most still water kit bags, but they serve a valuable role. Depending on the color, they can be used as a form of attraction. They help reduce tangles due to the rotating nature of the swivel. They also help quick release indicator peg loss in the event of a break off. And they help reduce incompatibility issues between softer nylon and stiffer fluorocarbon because the swivel acts as a junction between these two materials. Fish on, fish on. We're in deep water here. We're fishing into 22 feet of water, so that swivel helps get things down. Two flies on. I'm not sure which one he's taken. The bottom fly is a bloodworm imitation, and the one up above it is a coronamid pupa. These fish are big in here, so I'm gonna get this as best I can on the reel while not losing focus on the fish. And it's, I haven't seen it yet. There are some big, beautiful rainbows here in West Goose. And there it goes. Doing my best to keep it out of the anchors here. We're double anchored. And that is a beautiful, healthy rainbow. These West Goose fish, for all this colored water, you'd think would be dark, but they are some of the most brightly colored rainbows you'll have the pleasure to catch on the fly. There we go, she's in the bag. Fly is out. What a beautiful fish. I'm gonna put my, these fish are big and strong and they can be a little challenging to hold. So I'm just gonna use a soft cotton glove. You know, ideally you'd like, you know, bare hands, bare wet hands are, are, are ideal, but um, you run the risk of, you know, while you're holding the fish or perhaps you wanna take a quick picture. Um, you could accidentally drop the fish overboard. It could hit itself on the gunnels or worse, land in the boat. So it's just a, I guess you could almost say a lesser of two evils just to control the fish. We're gonna pick this up, let you have a look at that. What a beautiful fish, beautiful. This is why you, the parklands just rich with these lakes specifically chosen for their ability to produce fish like this on a consistent basis. Make sure she's going good. She's fighting me a bit. You can see those gills working. Wants to go. Off she goes. Into the gloom. Wow. Gotta love the parkland. Oh, we have a fish on. He wasn't even really looking at it. Whoa. <sighs> Gotta get close. Oh, nice jump. Nice jump, what we call a hit and run. 
<laughs> I wasn't really looking at it. All of a sudden, I was actually contemplating a fly change. And all of a sudden, boom, I just saw the line starting to move out. And he ate this on the go. Not sure what he ate. We're fishing a two fly rig here. Oh, he's not happy. And he is off and running. That side pressure into the rod. Fight him better. And at this point, I want to keep that fish while it's got lots of energy away from the boat. I've got two anchors down. I got long leader here. We're fishing 19 feet below indicator. Uh, sorry, from indicator to, to bottom fly because we're over 22 feet of water. And we're fishing patterns typically at this depth. It's a muddy bottom. Bloodworm patterns are an excellent choice, as are chironomid pupa patterns. Muddy bottoms are prime chironomid habitat. Getting near. I always expect a final surge at the boat, and I'm sensitive. Once I bring a trout within the diameter of the, the rod, that he's tired and sort of steerable, so he doesn't suddenly bolt like that and end up in the anchor ropes or around a motor or any other obstruction. So you don't want to be too aggressive. You want to obviously tire the fish, but you don't want to be too aggressive to get him in. You could uh, put a bad angle on your rod and cause a breakage, or you could wrap up around an anchor rope. I'll just steer him around if I can over this side. My boat's configured to fish out of the left or port side, so I have most of my equipment lying behind me so it doesn't get under my feet or in the way. And into the bag. Whew. What a beautiful fish, just silver bright. Just gonna reach in and take the fly out. He ate the upper fly, coronamid pupa. Gonna get my glove. Again, put the glove on for the protection of the fish. I can get a good firm grip on his tail if he flops around, could bang onto the gunnel, he could fall into the water in an unrevived state, or worse, accidentally fall into the boat and that wouldn't be good for him. So, what a magnificent fish. Look at that, like a chrome bumper. Just beautiful. Let's get him back in the water. Fish on. Oh, there it is. Wow, that indicator just plunged under. Got a little bit of a rain squall come in and things seem to be picking up. Looks like another nice rainbow. Make sure it's under control. I'm gonna use my pinky here to guideline evenly onto the spool, but don't lose focus on the fish. Just wanna keep it out of the anchor ropes. This fish has still got lots of energy left in it. I wanna make sure when she comes in, she's good and tired. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's sounded. Just having a tug of war right now. Not sure what fly she took. We're fishing over deep water here, deep water indicator systems, because they just, fish are uh, not really willing to chase the fly. So the fly's just dancing there seductively under the indicator. Fish just swims along and grabs on. About 19 feet between indicator and the bottom fly. So these quick release indicators are a must for this situation because when the fish takes the fly and you set the hook, the tension of those two actions releases the indicator. Otherwise, if you had an indicator pegged, a traditional corky style under, just follow that fish around. Because if you stand your ground, you're gonna pull the line into the anchor. So when that fish bolts off to the left like it did, I want to turn and go with it and use the length of my rod to steer and control that fish. Not the biggest Goose Lake resident, but again, ate the upper fly. Coronamid pupa. And when netting fish with droppers, you want to be careful because you could accidentally hook the other fly in the net before the fish is in the net, and you could have a problem. We don't have that in this case. We have a beautiful 
nickel bright goose lake rainbow. Put the glove on for fish handling. Reach in. Fly still right in the upper part of the snout. Carefully pull that out. Just put everything back in the water. Grab the fish firmly by the tail. Let you see it at home. Look at the colors of that. Such a nickel bright fish. Let's get it back in the water. Go out and do this again. Oh, she's got good energy, but I want to make sure she's... Sometimes they'll swim off with a spurt like that and then struggle for a bit. So I want to make sure those gills are working good. I'm just supporting her. Whoa, whoa there she goes. She wants to go. Wow, deep water indicator fishing. Great tactic here in the parklands and of course on your own local waters as well. Give it a try. When it comes to fly fishing lakes, I prefer to fish from an anchored position as I believe it offers me the best presentation control. But anchoring a boat isn't an accidental occurrence. There's a bit of skill and art to it. When I anchor my big boat, it's designed to fish with the wind at my back out the sides of the boat. So to begin, when I get to the spot I want to anchor, I lower the bow anchor first. Let that hit the bottom, lock the rope in place. I then move to the stern and using my electric motor, I swing the boat perpendicular to the wind. Again, the wind is always in my back. I don't want to fight the wind. I'm going to fish downwind. When I'm happy with that boat position, I then lower the stern anchor to lock it in place. Now the stern anchor is positioned on the upwind side of the boat. That way, when I'm anchored, my anchor ropes are going to trail out behind the boat. The boat is not going to push against the ropes and perhaps cause those anchors to shift in windy conditions. And of course, if I catch a fish, I'm gonna have to battle a fish at this side of the boat. The anchors are out behind, hopefully out of harm's way. My stern anchor is also the heaviest anchor in this setup, simply because I have all the width and weight of the boat concentrated at the rear. That's where I want my biggest anchor. A lot of line, we're in shallow water here. We've observed fish feeding on minnows. So what I did is I took the indicator off because they were aggressively chasing. So I've just put my balance leech on as a cast and retrieve fly. Probably about 12, 14 feet a liter. Made as long a cast as I could. And a, just a strip pause retrieve. And the balance leech is essentially a small jig. So it's pitching and undulating under there seductively. And this Trout has eaten it. I'm not sure. It looks like a brown trout. Let's reel down to him and just try to lift his head if I can. I expect one more surge out of him. There we go, into the bucket. Just gonna take the fly out. There it is, bruised balance leech. Just throw that out of the way, get the rod out of the way. Wet my hands. Big, full-shouldered, broad-sided brown trout. Look at that. Fat and healthy eating minnows. Such a special place. Wow. So strike indicators are a great deep water tactic when fish are taking coronaments here in the parklands, but another favorite morsel on the agenda are forage fish. And if you want to catch a forage feeding trout, you need to work the margins, the edges. So we're working along here. Big browns and rainbows cruise along these areas. It's very shallow fishing. Four or five feet under an indicator. They're in here chasing minnows around. So you just pick out likely looking spots. I always like points or openings in weeds. Um, if there's any rocks along the shoreline, you want to work those areas. Balance flies are excellent for this. Either specific minnow patterns or brown olive colored leeches work well because that is the actual natural coloration of the forage base in here. The brook sticklebacks, fathead minnows, those kind of things. So I actually have a dark leech pattern on. I call a bruise leech. It's a 
black and blue blend. And this looks to be a pretty healthy brown trout. There he goes. Whoa! Looks to be a big brown trout. He's still surging out in deep water. I don't want to horse him. We're using strong tippet here. M minimum, minimum, 3x, 8 pound tippet. More often, 2x, 1x, and 0x is not unheard of. Oh, it's actually a big rainbow. And this six weight is being taxed to the limit. When you come here, the minimum rod you want to bring is a six weight. You've got large fish, windy conditions at times, six, even seven weights sometimes. You don't want to show up in the uh, parklands region lightly armored for the battle. Oh, and that is a quality rainbow. Wow. I'm gonna move him over to the other side of the boat here. Holy smokes, one, two, three. We've got the glove on, the fly's out. This fish is has been sitting in the net and it's I think it's ready to go, so we may only get a quick glimpse of this. Whoa! Look at that thing. Look at that fish. Look at him. Wow. That's why you come to the parklands. Arguably one of the premier stillwater destinations in North America. Big browns. Big rainbows, tigers, brookies, they got it all here. Wow. I hope you've enjoyed today's show, learned a little bit more about fly fishing lakes and the tactics you can use in the parklands and on your own still waters. For more information on this show and others in the series, please visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook. You can also pick up past episodes and instructional tips on our YouTube channel as well. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the Russell Inn. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Scientific Anglers. Umpqua Feather Merchants. Superfly, fly fishing made easy.